Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought uh, I would do a quick video here basically talking about how the workshop stuff is going to work. Uh, so we can see that it's now available in game uh, for the Battlefield Engineer event and I'm going to show you how to diagnose stuff and how to pick what is diagnosed and then go from there. So the first thing to understand is you have to play one game with battle activity over 50% in order to get yourself uh, this uh, I-180S defective. This will have five issues with it. It will have uh, five problems uh, with the aircraft itself and you have to figure out what those issues are. You basically do it in this list here working out what is wrong uh, from the test flight that you will see in a second and once you figure that out uh, yourself then you are able to uh, pick the correct one choose selection and then disassemble the uh, I-180 and once it's disassembled into its parts then what you'll be able to do is build the parts which are broken and then check them and then be able to create your own fully done 180S. So as you can see you hit the diagnostics button from the workshop tab it takes you straight into a test flight and the best thing to do here is just to have a look around you know before you ever do anything look on the outside of your vehicle some of the defects are physical other ones are not and you're going to have to test them out one is linked to landing gear uh, so you have to <laughs> think about this you know you cannot uh, use x-ray view as you can see aircraft maintenance technicians only rely on their own skills so what can we see from the physical characteristics of this aircraft well it's rudder screwed uh, but it does have full maneuverability and also its elevator has also been hit uh, so we know that those are two problems with this aircraft you can see that they've taken minor damage on top of this uh, if we another thing that we have to test is the guns so if we have a look at the guns you can see that three of them are firing and one of them isn't so we've already found three out of the possible five defects that this machine has then uh, after having a look at the instruments inside and working out when you, you know, uh, hit the uh, propel, uh, when you turn the engine off and on, see what dials move, see what you don't, try and work out what dials correspond to what. And as you can see, some of my dials are just not moving, including the temperature one. So we could say maybe there's an electrical failure here. Let's just start up once again, or maybe there's a fuel issue, or maybe, you know, something is wrong with the aircraft. Because as you can see, the engine uh, is not really starting too well. <laughs> so we know that there is an issue with the engine in some way, uh, just from this preliminary look. So we know there's an issue with the elevator, an issue with the electrics, an issue with the uh, rudder, and also an issue with the guns. So we already know four out of the five things. Now we take off, right? So if we take off, we can see <laughs> that something is coming out of the back. And it seems to be fuel. Remember that this machine should only leak fuel or oil. It should not leak any water since I believe it's an air-cooled uh, machine. So from that, uh, if you see a trail like this, you know for a fact that it's leaking fuel and not water. On top of this as well, if it's leaking oil, it'll be a hell of a lot more black. So we have elevator damage, rudder damage, gun issues. And then also we have the fuel problem and it seems like some of the electrics are not working in this machine. You can see that three of them there are not moving at all. You have uh, this one which is not showing the correct readings or at least it seems like it. And other ones which are just not moving at all in this bottom left. So we have problems with electrics, we have fuel issues, we have uh, obviously the elevator and rudder thing. So we've figured out you know, the five things that are wrong with this aircraft. Now, luckily, I was able to get quite an easy one, right? Uh, a lot of the uh, di a lot of the characteristics were physical on the model, so it was easy to tell. And now we just have to go through each of the options. Whoops! And now we just have to go through each of the options and work out do they correspond to what we saw. So remember, all five of these options have to be exactly what is wrong with your aircraft. So if we see here, oil radiator is a problem for this line well there was no issue with our oil radiator right so we can mark that as incorrect the next one 
Uh, we have cooling system issues. It could be that, uh, but uh, the issue uh, with this is the uh, the uh, the uh, instruments in the the instruments in the uh, cockpits were showing the temperature being zero degrees. Right, so. If that was the case, surely that temperature would be up. And we don't have any more electrical issues with this thing. So, no, or what I mean is we don't have any electrical equipment problems. So if that's the case, the cooling system, the temperature would be through the roof uh, for this machine. Also, the fuselage covering, overall, there wasn't anything wrong with that. There was an issue with the rudder. So we can see, oh, and with the armament as well. So some of them match up with this one, but it's not all five. The next one engine cowling. There was no issue with the engine cowling. There was also no issue with the traction of the left aileron. Remember, if you can't just find physical characteristics, you're going to have to start rolling this aircraft. You're going to have to test its flaps. You're going to have to test its brakes. Uh, you're going to have to test everything uh, on it. Some of them will be very obvious, such as the oil radiator. Some, such as the high lift devices, uh, such as the flaps, will not be as obvious. So this one, uh, since uh, we didn't test the brake system, we know that the fuel system is buggered, but the engine cowling, we didn't see any damage with it, so therefore that one is also incorrect. This one with the horizontal stabilizer, uh, so the elevator at the back, there was an issue with it. Fuel system, there was also an issue. Rudder, there was an issue. Electrical equipment, only half of it was working in the cockpit, and the armament also was an issue. So that to me, is the correct one. Now, I haven't tested it yet, so I might be completely wrong about this, but <laughs> this seems to be the way it's going to work. Then, horizontal stabilizer, oil radiator, once again, we can disregard it because there's no issue with the radiator. And then the next one is uh, looking like might be the closest with, uh, you know, engine issues and high lift devices. So what we have to do is we need to test uh, it again to make sure that the flaps are working as they should and uh, not just falling off the aircraft. So space, let's get in the air, let's have a look at the flaps because I believe that's what the high lift devices are talking about. Because this thing, it could have electrical issues and also temperature issues uh, since, you know, uh, the temperature gauge isn't working, or at least it seems like it's not working. And also uh, the other issue uh, with the fact that, right, let's just retract gear real quick so we don't break them off. It seems like the gear's working properly. Uh, so now uh, what we have to do to uh, test uh, the machine is just roll it around a little bit, see uh, what dials are actually working, and also see uh, just little things uh, such as, you know, if it does overheat, you know, quite a lot, which is something we can't really work out. But one thing we can do is the flaps. So here are the flaps uh, slightly down, then here are the flaps uh, really down. Uh, you can see that they seem to be working perfectly. Uh, I don't see any holes in them. Uh, they seem to uh, be working exactly how, you know, they're supposed to. So it looks like they're in good nick, right? There is no damage, there is no nothing. There's a little bit of paint damage, but that's it. And once again, the engine conks out because it has limited fuel. So from that, we have now diagnosed this again. You can, diag you can do the diagnostics as much as you want, right? So make sure you are sure about, you know, what's going on. So high lift devices, they're fine with this. Therefore, it must be the six option where everything else uh, lines up. So what we can do is do this, wait 15 seconds and see if it's correct. And if it isn't correct, then you won't see this video because I've obviously got it wrong. Now, <laughs> yeah, what you do is you run the uh, diagnostics. It takes one blueprint to work out what's wrong with this uh, the selection is finished and let's see if it's uh, correct and it looks like it is correct it is the correct defect list you've received the maximum award so you want to get it correct so you can get the most uh, uh, technician toolkits and from here what you do it's simple so you know what's wrong with it all you have to do is disassemble the aircraft this unfortunately takes 10 minutes so therefore you know you have to kind of uh, wait on it and at the same time you know if you want to you can actually preview these vehicles what i would do is i would start grinding in games to get the components to get the things that you need in order to fix uh, this machine but yeah uh, that is how the uh, repair thing works just remember 
Not all of the things are physical that you can see. Make sure to test every part of the vehicle. And if you need any help with any of it, please join the tech hub and check the channels. There's a lot of people working out this stuff really quickly. They're doing a great job at, uh, you know, speeding through it. And uh, it's wonderful to see. So what I'll do is I'll wait uh, here. I'll stop the recording. And in a little bit, uh, what I'll do is uh, show the uh, disassembly and how that also works. Hello everyone, so we're back and after playing one battle, because obviously we have to wait until this finishes, you know, you have to wait for, uh, you know, a little bit to wait for it to diagnose, uh, I was able to play one battle, so I got myself this little box, which uh, will give you as many toolkits as it said. So I only get one out of it, that's fine, you can get one to three. Now, after doing this, we can now finish uh, disassembling this, so we've disassembled it into its parts now and now what we have to do is we have to examine each of the parts and see if uh, they are good or if they are not good and as you can see we use technician toolkits to do that so we know that the airframe is buggered we know that the equipment is also buggered and the landing gear should be okay so if we examine the landing gear which i'll do now which takes another three minutes uh, then, you know, we'll be able to see what uh, actually goes on here. So what I'm going to do, stop this recording here, and then uh, once again show you the next stage. So now we're on the next stage uh, after examining this part. So now what we have to do is click finish, and you can see that we have received the landing gear. So this component is the full part, and we know that it's completely fine since we were able to get it as a full part. Next time, in the next part of this video, I will make sure to show you uh, a part which isn't uh, fine, such as the equipment which we worked out through the diagnostic test. And as you can see, these are the different things that you need to create it. So we've already created the landing gear already. We know that the armament is busted, so we need to fix that, so on and so forth forth right so the whole point of the diagnostics is to work out which parts here are screwed and once you work them out you know you can then use the toolkits to assemble these and then use components uh, that you get through the battles and the toolkits to also assemble stuff but i'll show you that in the next little bit of this video so now we've been able to uh, work out that this part is okay so we don't have to fix it at all so therefore it goes straight into the parts bit for the plane now we have done the armaments which we know has an issue with it uh, because of the fact of the diagnostic so if we hit finish here you can see that we've received one armament but what it has is once again uh, a defective component so what we have to do is disassemble this piece it gives us some toolkits and what we have to do is once again uh, be able to rebuild it uh, from a different uh, thing. Basically what you have to do is uh, gain the armament in a battle, right? So because of uh, the fact that it's a component, remember components are built into parts which go on the aircraft. So the armament itself is just a single component, whereas the airframe would be seen as a part because you have to put together the fuselage, the wing, and the empennage uh, for it to work. So now, from here, what we do is we just uh, disassemble another part of it, so such as the equipment here, and we do the whole process again. So pretty much all we're trying to do at this point is work out what we need to get in battles, which in this case would be the armament and then anything else which once we've examined is broken. And then from there, we use the toolkits and the components together to build ourselves the parts, which are stuff uh, such as uh, the airframe and the propeller group and uh, this uh, here. Oh, well, sorry, not the controls, but basically these two and anything that is required here and put them together and create the I-180S. So those are all the steps uh, that you need to do. I know it's a little bit convoluted. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but when you break it down, it's not too bad. Just understand while you're waiting for these timers, you can go into battles. You can get, uh, you know, the 
uh, maintenance toolkits between them and I would say it's definitely a good idea to do it and also you gain components through playing battles as well so uh, while you are uh, getting the toolkits you will also be getting the components and then you put them all together to create the parts for the aircraft right it's Compared to the i7 event, it's uh, it's a little bit convoluted, but I actually think this is simpler than the i7 event. Uh, we have already broken down all of the defective things uh, when it comes to the uh, test driving stuff. So, you know, if you need help with that, once again, go on the Tech Hub. And also, we've been able to break down all of the examined or unexamined stuff and what you need to do to be able to create them. All of the recipes at this stage, if you have to create uh, a part of it, uh, all you have to do is uh, go here and, uh, you know, examine it, and then it'll tell you what you need. So for the airframe, you need the fuselage, wing, and empennage. As I said, for the propeller group, you need all of this stuff. Once you examine it, it will open up and show you all of these things that you will gain through the battles. Once you have all of those, you put them together, create the R1ATS. Yeah, uh, it's, it's as simple as that. So the main two steps that you have to worry about is the diagnostic, working out what is actually wrong with the aircraft, understanding that you do have to examine everything, even the things which you don't think are broken, you also have to examine and uh, using the toolkits and the components to build this, right? It's, it's three stages and uh, as I said, just playing rank two or above and making sure to get 50% battle activity. I've been kind of unlucky getting parts, which is why this video is a little bit late. And uh, the best thing to do is to try and get first on your team to get as many parts as possible uh, to make this easier on yourself. And also get some of those sweet, sweet camouflages, which is something you should uh, work towards as well. So let's see that we know there is an issue with the equipment, right? So uh, if we click uh, on the finished, once it's finished, it will break up into the equipment. You can see here it has a defective part and now you will receive all of these that you need to assemble to create the equipment itself. So some of these uh, you, <laughs> you cannot uh, disassemble uh, this part. Why not? Uh, oh, because I need, sorry, I need toolkits to be able to disassemble it. But once I use the toolkits, you'll receive these three parts. Once you build these, you'll be able to put them together and create a, uh, a equipment which actually works. You know, you can find that here. Once that is all together, then uh, Bob's your uncle. You know, you have a not defective piece, but instead a piece that works. So that's the whole uh, shebang for you when it comes to the assembling. Hopefully you understand this. Hopefully uh, it's not as hard as you realize now that it's been broken down. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank B. Young, Blackie, Dyslexic Child, Martinez, Moxie, Nito, Nick Graham, Alobrolo, and Super Cacti for supporting me on Patreon.